Uh, my name is Mark Meng from National University of Singapore. So today my presentation's title is uh, the Post GDPR Phones hunt uh, Threat Hunting on Android Phones, Detecting OS Level Safeguard of User Unresetable Identifiers. So we know that the, the protection of uh, personal data uh, has gained a great deal of attention around the world. So as of the year 2022, which is last year, right, uh, there are 137 out of 194 countries around the world has put in place uh, legislation to secure the, the protection of personal data and privacy. So, so uh, like the European Union GDPR is one of the most famous laws uh, due, it's well known of its very large penalty against a company if, if the company is, is found to not properly handling the user's data. And our smartphone, as our daily use devices, right, uh, are becoming the first line of defenses against privacy infringement. So on the other hand, uh, from the Google's platform, from the Google's Android platform perspective, Google has taken steps to uh, enforce new privacy features to restrict the app's use of uh, user data. So let's take the Android 10 as example. Uh, there are three major changes of the Android privacy policies. So first of all, uh, there's a new privilege permission called uh, read privilege phone state which is uh, a, a new system permission that only granted to the privileged system apps to read the unresetable device identifiers, including like the, the serial number, the MEI, and the sofa. And there's a the second change. is a, It's a new app unique and user resetable identifier called uh, advertising ID. This is, introdu this is introduced to replace the existing Android ID. And the third main change is a compose is a, app developers are request to properly disclose the app's access, collection, use, and sharing of user data. Now moving to the research perspective. So during the past decades, we have witnessed the personal identifiable, uh, personally identifiable data exfiltration in Android at app level and even the library level has been extensively studied by the research community. However, it's left the privacy protection at OS level as an open question. And we also learned that the many types of personally identifiable, uh, identifiable data that served at OS level are actually user unresetable. For example, they are not easily replaceable as a password once leaked. And we refer, this, we refer those data as the term as user unresetable identifiers, we shortly written as UUI. So this makes us curious about one question, like whether the operating systems themselves comprehensively safeguard UUIs. And in this study, we are going to investigate this problem. So first of all, this slide shows the six pre-identified UUIs, as you may say that, well, they are so common. Yes, you're right. So these six UUIs are officially documented by Google, and they all have official APIs to access these six UUIs, for each UUI, actually, there is at least one official API, or used to be at least one official UUI uh, API to, for apps to access them. But in this paper, we are not only to investigate uh, whether these six UIs are protected or not. We are actually want to discover as many UIs as possible. So these six pre-identified UIs are used for us to form our understanding for more types of undiscovered UUIs or on the Android devices. So based on the six pre-identified UUIs, uh, we are going to design and implement uh, a tool. We name it U2i2 to systematically investigate the OS level UI protection at large scale. It is designed to, ass to assess the protection of not only the six pre-identified UUIs, but also the other uh, previously undiscovered UUIs. To achieve our goals, we summarize the main challenges into three points. So first of all, we aim to identify undocumented access channels. On this basis, we would like to make this process automated as much as possible. And uh, uh, after identifying the undocumented access channels, we would like to pinpoint uh, the customized on the undiscovered UUIs. So because we have already recognized six pre-identified UUIs, our approach starts with documented access channel assessing. 
at this time, our U2I2 test the UUI access uh, on behalf of the third uh, on behalf of normal third party applications. So we aim to test two types of error. The first one is called uh, the legacy permissions. So this is this testing aims to find uh, if the in case that like the additional permissions are uh, required or new permission introduced during the OS upgrade. So our U2I2 aims to find if this uh, new feature has been properly Im uh, implemented on device or not. The second type of error is called missing de-identification. So for example, the MAC address uh, randomization, which is firstly introduced in Android 8, 0, 8, 0, but becomes mandatory in Android 10. So we are going to test if that means given the Android 10 or later device, if this randomization has been properly implemented or not. Next, I will share our assessment of undocumented access channels. It begins with an exploration of undocumented access channels. So we take the six pre-identified UUI as seeds to and we expect the unknown UUIs may share the same set of access channels. So to this end, we adopt two strategies. The first one is the static control flow analysis. We apply us uh, we actually apply a three-step approach to perform this static analysis. So we first of all extract master level uh, correlations until the service managers. And after that, we map local interfaces to the corresponding remote interfaces, which are usually owned by Android system services. In the end, we perform another round of static analysis to pinpoint the components that really serve the UI uh, on the, uh, based on the API request. And besides, on the, besides the static analysis, we also resort to file system forensic to see if we can find any more access channels if uh, exist from there. So these slides demonstrate two typical static control flow of the API invocation. So the first API is get zero, and the second, uh, the first one uh, is get MEI, and the second one is get zero. So through the control flow, we can see that the invocation of uh, the API to access pre-identified UIs do shares a similar pattern, right? So they are usually handled by a system service, as shown in the yellow box on the screen, and. Uh, the dash line connecting the local contacts and remote contacts represents an inter-process communications, which is usually handled by the Android binding mechanism. So after the corresponding system service receives the request, uh, the control flow continues until the endpoint when the UUI was really served by the OS. So what we learned from this control flow analysis uh, first of all, the, we found that the, the, the invocation of API access is usually handled by a, a system service of Android. This inspires us to explore an access channel to directly invoke the public interfaces defined in system service. Second, we also find another access channel called system properties. It appears in the green color box because we find the actual provider of the serial number at the end of the control flow is the system properties. So in the end, we managed to recognize three undocumented access channels. So they are system settings, system properties, and system services. So after the access, uh, after the access channel exploration, we move to the next step, retrieving entry points and testing. To, this, to do this, the U2I2 first retrieve entry points through the three undocumented channels. So you remember, right, the system settings, system property, and system services. Then we test through an app installed on different Android devices. So for the system property and system settings, uh, the testing will, will be pretty easy because Android uh, does provide public interfaces for apps to make a query. But for the system services, conventional binding mechanism is not applicable for us because our test app deems not able to have all the permissions to bind all the system services out there. Uh, are running on the system, on a device, right? Therefore, we resort to a hacking way through Java reflection to bypass the permission check uh, and enable it, which enable us to directly invoke all the publicly defined interfaces on every system service on a device. And after the testing, we will receive a huge amount of data. So our next step is to identify UUIs from the data received. Our U2I2 adopts two-step approach to pinpoint 
unknown or uh, undiscovered OEM customized UIs. So we first perform a filtering to exclude values of insufficient size. Next, we perform a differential analysis to exclude values that are same across the different devices and values that are changed after a factory reset on the same device. So by doing this, we can easily find UUIs from data led to us because UUIs are known as user unresetable identifiers. Now uh, we would like to share uh, some of our key findings of this work. Our first key finding is the landscape of OS level UI safeguard. So we conduct a large scale device testing uh, that covers 13 latest model, device models from nine manufacturers, which represent almost 85% of the global market share of Android devices. And we find the UI mishandling issues are pre and we find the UI mishandling uh, issues are pervasive in the uh, latest Android phones. So during our device testing, we found 51 unique vulnerabilities, uh, which leading up to 65 occurrences of UI leakages. And 12 out of 13 tested devices contains at least one UI leakage. And we also find one vulnerability from AOSP. So you know that AOSP, AOSP means uh, the Google Pixel phone, the, the, the most original Android device. And uh, unsurprisingly, uh, this vulnerability has been inherited in all devices. And we also find 18 leakages are associated with unknown UI, which means other than the six pre-identified UIs. And we call this, uh, we call it as the, the, we call them as miscellaneous UI in the later side. So from for the miscellaneous UI, we find 14 unique UIs from the 18 occurrences. So the uh, recognized miscellaneous UIs covers identifiers of NFC models, display panels, uh, camera. PCB board, and even fingerprint sensors. And our next key findings uh, is about exfiltration point via undocumented access channels. So we find undocumented access channels, the three channels, uh, system services, system properties, system uh, settings, are uh, the major exfiltration point, which contributes 45 out of 51 availabilities. And five of them uh, are caught from the system services, 10 are from system uh, settings, and the remaining 13, which occupy two thirds of all the uh, found vulnerabilities, are from system properties. Our last key funding aims to address the question like, have our identified undocumented channels uh, already been abused by the apps in the well? So to do this test, we test the top 150 apps from the Google Play Store and another 150 apps from an alternative app store. Uh, here we use Xiaomi App Store. And our findings show that the 12 of, out of uh, 300 analyzed apps have relevant behaviors, and all the access are through undocumented channels. But, um, but fortunately, our study shows that the broad UUI collection by apps are actually not observed in our study. So in the end, I would like to remark that uh, about responsible disclosure, we have reported all of our findings uh, to the relevant party and stakeholders, and we also keep them confidential for at least 90 days uh, for them to be minted before we report them uh, in the academic uh, research. And we have received so far eight CVE from Google and four other manufacturers as shown in this table. So uh, to wrap up, uh, this, in this paper, we conduct a comprehensive study to understand OS level UI protection. To this end, we design and implement a systematic assessment approach to explore undocumented channels at large scale and in the end, we successfully reveal the status quo of UI protection on the latest Android device, especially in all this we call a post GDPR era. So uh, that's all of my presentation, and I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm Hanu from Qualcomm. You said that you found 51 unique vulnerabilities. Yeah. But you seem to be suggesting only eight of them are accepted. And what happened to the rest? Out of 51 unique vulnerabilities, you got CVEs for eight of them. So these 51 map to those C eight CVEs, or there's some more to come? We only received eight so far among these five uh, 51 vulnerabilities. So, uh, more questions? Maybe Urchel first. Uh. Awesome work, thank you. Uh, if somebody actually used these identifiers already, 
they save to the server or something like that. This has been disclosed and maybe uh, clo it has been solved on newer devices. So the users of these previous vulnerabilities or identifiers are going to are they going to be able to continue using those identifiers to identify those users? Or is there a way to kind of shut down this usage completely? Well, this is not uh, actually a, the, like the, what we should do for the OS level. That depends on how the, uh, the data storage people, they would like to continue holding this data or not. But actually, according to GDPR and law regulations, this data actually cannot be held freely without you know, given, uh, given the user's consent. But uh, fortunately, we see all the 51 vulnerabilities we found are actually all fixed by the devices. So that means if you are buying a new device, at least for these 51 vulnerabilities, you are lucky. So that means uh, your device that uh, properly hand safeguard your UIs. So the only, uh, I think one of the most most important suggestions from the OS level, that means always keep your phone up to date. Hey, uh, Simon, to you, Braunschweig. I was wondering why were there differences in vulnerabilities between phone models if the uh, safeguards are OS level? Yes. When we talk about OS level, we are, it's, in, it's not just about uh, AOSP, I mean, there's open source Android, but you know, every device, every manufacturer, they will have their own uh, OS image. And of course, they will implement a lot of customized functionalities. And those functionalities are actually the system level. They have the uh, higher privilege than the normal app. That's why we want to conduct the OS level uh, study, because that means when you buy, once you buy a phone from a certain OEM manufacturers, right? You, when you buy the phone, you, even you, you didn't install any apps, they are deemed to have some system apps. And some of them may not be manufactured by the Google, you know that, by the manufacturers. But these are actually the OS level protection not the app level because they need to have, have a higher privilege of the normal apps. Yeah, they can access more uh, resources from the OS. And those OS resources, like the three un undocumented access channels, right, the settings, property, and system uh, services actually are not designed for third-party apps, normal apps to access. Thanks. 